class we discussed about pollination and their types today we shall discuss about the different forms of adaptation that a plant mechanizes to achieve pollination we all know that pollination is of two types self pollination and cross pollination self pollination and cross pollination The only disadvantage of self pollination is the inbreeding depression. About inbreeding depression, we shall discuss later on. Inbreeding depression is because of continued self pollination, the seed loses its vitality and vigor. In majority of the angiospermic plants, the flowers are chasmogamous. Chasmo gamos. This means that the floral parts are exposed. The stamens, the pistils are exposed. Now we take an example of a plant which shows both chasmogamy and cleistogamy. We take the example of a plant known as pomelina. It has got the chasmogamous flowers above the aerial side and below is the subaerial side. It has got cleistogamous flowers. The floral parts are enclosed. That is, it is in a bus shape. The petals are closed and inside this, the stigma is there. And the anthers are present. Pollination takes place in this closed form. Now we shall discuss about the different adaptive characters which are anemophilous or the wind pollinated flowers have. The wind pollinated flowers, they are small in size, inconspicuous, and the flowers are arranged in fluorescence. They are the colors are not bright. So what are the different additive features? They are, flowers are small, flowers are small. The pollen grains, pollens produced by these flowers are numerous. They are produced in large quantities. They are very light and non-sticky. Pollens are non-sticky. And light. The stigma is enlarged, that is longer in size and feathery. And feathery. You have seen the tassels of a maize cob, that is a butta. The tassels that are hanging out are actually the stigma and the style of the Flowers. The pollen grains produced by these flowers are enormous so as to compensate the loss which is done because of the wind currents. Now we take the example of hydrophilus flowers. Hydrophilus that is pollinated by by water. Pollinated by water. Example we can take of hydrilla valis negria and Zostera or the seagrass. Hydrilla and valis negria are freshwater angiospermic plants. Zostera is also known as eel grass. In Valisneria, the main grass, sorry, the main flower releases its pollen on the surface of the water. The female flower develops a long stalk. Develops a 
long coil stalk to reach the surface of water like this. The pollen grains they reach along with the water current and pollination and fertilization takes place. As fertilization takes place the stalk here is the stalk the stalk pulls the flower down. In Zostera or the sea grass or the eel grass, grass the pollens have got wing like structure. They swim to the female part of the flower that is the stigma and pollination takes place. This is a submerged plant. Majority of the endospermic plants are pollinated by insects that is they are entomophilus or they are pollinated by small animals or the zoophilus. Now what are the characteristics of entomophilus flowers or the zoophilus flowers? Let us see. The entomophilus or insect pollinated flowers insect pollinated flowers they are large in size that is they are conspicuous the color is bright and they have got fragments also and nectar also nectar is actually the reward which a plant gives to the insects or the animals. Some of the flowers give pollen, pollen powder or pollen grains to the birds or the insects. Some of the floral species, they provide a safe place for the pollinating agents either to lay eggs or to live. Or it provides shelter to the growing larvae of the insects. We can take the example of moth and yucca plants. The moth and yucca plants, they complete their life cycle with the help of each other. Without each other, they cannot complete their life cycle. The moths, they visit the flowers and they deposit the eggs inside the locules of the ovary. The fly in turn gets pollinated by the moth. So this is a close relationship between the yucca plant and the moth. Earlier we discussed how continued self-pollination leads to inbreeding depression. This means the ovules, the seeds, they lose their vitality and vigor. To overcome this inbreeding depression, plants depleting depression which is known as outbreeding devices. Now we will talk about outbreeding devices. Outbreeding devices. Now there are different forms of outbreeding devices that a plant mechanizes to discourage self-pollination Cross pollination is the method. This means the plant should be unisexual. Another mechanism is dichogamy. Dichogamy. This refers to a condition where the anther and the pistil they mature at different times to avoid self-pollination. Now, dichogamy is of two types. Protandary This means the endosium matures earlier than the gynosium. Second is protogyny protogyny which means the gynosium will mature earlier than the Androsium. Second is Percogamy. Percogamy. So certain obstacles or barriers are present in the fly itself which does not allow the male part to fuse with the female part. The third is Heterostyle. Tiny. 
in heterostyle, the length of the stigma and the style, they are different in different flowers of the same species. This is to avoid self-pollination. Next is self-incompatibility. Self-incompatibility. This means this is actually a genetic or inherent, inherent character in which the plants to prevent the fusion of gametes in genetically similar plants. We have studied about pollination, their types and their different forms and di different adaptive features. Now coming to the significance of pollination. Pollination brings the main gamete for fertilization. It stimulates the growth of the ovary. It prevents the abscission or degeneration of the ovary. All of you have seen cross pollination. Cross pollination brings in variation, which results in the formation of new characters. The genetic variation is necessary for the better survival of the species.